Welcome to the Bob Allen's HealthCast, episode number 432. Are suntans and sun exposure as unhealthy as we have been taught? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. You know, I'm, I'm 71 years old, and I grew up in the South. And when I was a child, as soon as school was out in the summer, uh, literally because we were poor, my parents cut off my blue jeans into shorts and <laughs> sent me out all summer long with no shirt, no long-legged pants, no socks and shoes most of the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were just little aborigines running around <laughs> in the South, in the sun. And I was nut brown most of my life. Mm-hmm. And then the older I got, the more I my outdoor life ended and I was in school or began to work. Mm-hmm. But also the culture changed and people started saying, oh my God, you cannot be out in the sun. The sun will cause skin cancers mm-hmm. and kill you. <laughs> what we have learned is that skin cancers can kill you. Mm -hmm. There are three types of skin cancers. Mm -hmm. The one you have to be uh, aware of that's more lethal is Mm -hmm. a melanoma. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it can kill you. And it's Mm -hmm. very bad. The other two are not as bad. You can have them, but they don't necessarily end your life. They have Mm -hmm. to be treated and taken care of. But now there's... Those are basal cell and squamous cell. Basal cell carcinomas and squamous cells. And... Basal cell is local. It doesn't it doesn't metastasize and become that kind of cancer, but it can a small area will have to be reset or removed mm-hmm. if it's on your face. But uh, it's not it's not deadly. And a or, or the top of your head for or the top like of me. your yeah. head. Um, but the the squamous cell cancer is more more likely to metastasize, and that can be deadly. But but melanoma is the worst. Yeah, but, you go up the curve, they, they get more serious. But the two that are most likely to be deadly. Or excuse me, the two that are most likely not to be deadly are associated with sunshine, and the melanoma that is deadly is usually not associated with sunshine. So that's that's the difference between those cancers. So we worry about the deadly one, which is melanoma, but most of the time they're found in areas that are not in areas of sun exposure. So. We are constantly trying to do research and find new information for these podcasts, but also for the kind of medicine that you practice. Mm-hmm. You want to stay on the cutting edge mm-hmm. of, of new things that are learned. And we found this article in a, an online magazine called Outside, mm-hmm. and it looks, it, it looks in depth at the issue of sun exposure, mm-hmm. suntan lotion, sun blockers, things like that, mm-hmm. skin cancers, and other health-related issues, primarily as a way to say, what about vitamin D? <laughs> vitamin D is an essential hormone that your body makes, and it makes it in response to exposure to sunlight. Not about being tanned, but it just the just walk outside and the sun is up there and it doesn't cost you anything mm-hmm. and you're exposed to it. And that fires up the production of the vitamin production D of this hormone your in your body and vitamin D and you have to have it. And those people who have adequate amounts of vitamin D suffer from less overall health issues. They have l- a lesser mortality rate. Lower blood pressure, less uh, currents of heart disease and, and stroke. stroke, and less diabetes. I mean, those are the killers of aging. And, and they are much more deadly than melanoma. Or And, and so the, your lifetime risk of getting uh, a heart attack? a stroke, diabetes, are significantly greater than your lifetime risk of getting a skin cancer. Mm -hmm. And if you get a skin cancer, two out of three are less likely to kill you, whereas a stroke, a heart attack, and diabetes are very likely to kill you. So they wrote, their studies showed that for every person who dies of skin cancer, more than 100 die from cardiac problems alone. Right. So that's a big difference. So they're making... The pitch for don't wear 50 sunscreen all the time. Don't stay out of the sun wearing huge hats and and all the time. You have to have some sun exposure. And 
they they do talk about the difference in mel, uh, melanin. People who are darker can be out in the sun more with less damage to their sun to their, to their skin, skin. Yeah. and less likelihood of cancer. But they get less vitamin D through their skin per hour than someone who has white skin. Yes. So people who have white skin or light skin should be should be careful not to burn, but they get a lot of vitamin D in a short period of time. So after an hour, they should put their sunscreen on so that they don't get burned. The biggest problem is burning, not tanning. Burning, not tanning. So so let's talk about mm -hmm. the, the melanin dispersal in the population. Mm -hmm. This article quotes these numbers. It says people of color rarely get melanomas. And melanomas are the one that will kill you. The rate for people getting melanomas is 26 per 100,000 in Caucasians, mm -hmm. 5 per 100,000 in Hispanics, 1 per 100,000 in Africans. So mm -hmm. the more the more melanin, melanin you, have, you in, have in your skin, the less you risk you have to get skin cancer. Mm -hmm. So I'm but, an Italian, so I'd say I'm with the Hispanics, five and hundred thousand. Yeah. So, so. So the olive skin. So help, I wear sunscreen you. where I don't want to have wrinkles. So I wear it on my face, my neck, and my chest. That's and, where most of most of the sunscreen that I wear right. on a daily basis is. So or so, I put it on. Yeah, and, and I I know. I would say anecdotally, I feel much better when I have a tan. Right. I have higher energy. I feel more relaxed, which... Even if there were no mirrors in the world, <laughs> and we didn't know that a tan made us look better or healthier, we would still feel better. Well, so there's a difference between looking and feeling. vitamin D to yeah. get that tan. Yeah. My wife fusses all the time in the wintertime because she's pasty white. Right. And she likes to have a level of tan. <laughs> but it, it's frustrating because you get all this heavy messaging from... Uh, doctors and society that says don't go out in the sun without these heavy sun blockers don't mm -hmm. get tanned anymore mm -hmm. always stay pasty white if you if your skin color allows for that so the less exposure you have the safer you are and that's a misnomer because the safer you are has to do with the safer you are from the risk of skin cancer not safer you are from everything else. from everything else um, and you can't take enough oral vitamin d it doesn't have the same effect as direct vitamin D through your skin. Right. It is, you should take it, but you should also get the sun vitamin D. So that's very important. Now, the, the uh, opinion around the world has changed. American dermatologists still say, no sun, no sun, because I have to tell you that when you talk to a specialist, they're interested in their specialty. They don't want you to have sun or skin cancer, that's all they think about. They don't think about cardiac disease. That's for the cardiologists. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're writing the book for Americans as no sun, yet a cardiologist who doesn't deal with skin cancers would probably say, you need vitamin D and you need to be out in the sun without sunscreen. Right. So what's happening throughout the world is now the Europeans and the Australians are saying The dermatological societies in, in England, Australia, and New Zealand have all switched from the heavy sun blockers. They mm -hmm. say you need the sun. It's okay to get a tan. Mm -hmm. You have to use a different kind of something if you're going to put sun blockers on mm -hmm. for your for your whole body. I mean, mm -hmm. what you were saying about face and skin, mm -hmm. I, I didn't see a reference to that in, in the article. Mm -hmm. But the American Dermatological Association still says on their website, avoid sun at all costs. And yet the statistic that they, that they offer, skin cancer kills surprisingly few people in America. Mm -hmm. Three in 100,000 people die from skin cancer. Mm -hmm. But then it goes on to say, for every person who dies for skin cancer, more than 100 die uh, from uh, cardio problems. Right. So to me, that's a very important uh, comparison. Well, as you said in the, in the, the intro that you gave last week to this, uh, it's about balance. It's mm -hmm. about balance. You know, Benjamin Franklin said, uh, moderation in all things except moderation. <laughs> and so what we're learning is you can have some exposure to the sun, but you can't get burned. Mm -hmm. And that you, burned. you need, to, yeah, you shouldn't get burned. You need to have the vitamin D because the vitamin D is what helps protect, it lowers your blood pressure. It helps protect you from heart attacks and strokes and diabetes. Those are significant health risks that are of epidemic proportions in the United States Compared to skin cancer, which is a health risk, mm -hmm. which needs to be treated, it's serious. You have to do something about it if you get it. And the melanoma 
type of skin cancer can actually kill you. But as Dr. Moffin said, most of those melanomas don't seem to come from exposure to the sun. They right. come from... In other studies that aren't listed here in this, one, in this one article, vitamin D is actually necessary to prevent cancer. Mm -hmm. So it is an anti-cancer vitamin. Not, not skin and, cancer. Just not skin cancer, cancer, all cancer. Uh -huh. So it, it's not about the vitamin D that's giving you, the, that's giving you a skin cancer. It's about, that's about burning and severe exposure to the sun, probably like what you had when you were a kid. Yeah. So, so it's still a recommendation to have your children wear sunscreen most of the time. And you know they're not, it's always going to come off somehow. But most of the time, because you don't want them to get burned. So after a certain time of exposure, you need to put sunscreen on so they don't burn. Exactly. And you don't want so you children who are... have to be cautious are, and careful. Because you, that's when you're laying the groundwork for the rest of your life. You don't want your children to burn. But they still need some sun exposure. And, and so there are strategies you learn, like go out in the early morning sun mm -hmm. rather than the midday sun mm -hmm. for if you're tanning or laying or out. If you live around or, here, midday's it. There's yeah, no sun except at midday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in the wintertime, you've got a little window of like an hour where you can actually see the sun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is so you have to uh, adjust everything associated with this lesson to where you live and to how much what your skin tone is, and also if you're taking vitamin D orally. And I mean, I think everyone should who's not living in Florida or Arizona, and who has an indoor job. Right. So basically, almost everyone in America needs to take vitamin D, but also they need to get sun exposure. So this is one of those things where it's cutting edge, and it's going to make a big um, explosion in the medical community where one, um, one specialty versus another is going to be at odds. So that is a challenge in American medicine. It uh, is. Because so many doctors specialize, and they're, they're encouraged to specialize, and they focus on their specialty. If I'm a cardiologist and I know things about helping you avoid a heart attack or treat the heart attack mm -hmm. that you have, but they move away from the general practice of medicine, mm -hmm. the general information and awareness of it. So then you get these categories that are in disagreement about their strategies. So the dermatologists who are focused only on skin cancer are saying to you, you need to avoid the sun at all costs. I always used to hear, always consider the source. Uh -huh. So when some doctor is telling you who is a, say, I'll, I'll give an example in breast cancer. A breast cancer doctor says, don't take hormones. Right. Don't take hormones. Right. Because you might get breast cancer, which is not true, but they still say that. Uh, but their thought is, I don't want patients to get breast cancer. They don't think, I don't want them to have us. They don't think about osteoporosis. They don't think about Alzheimer's. They don't think about uh, ending up in a nursing home because you can't walk and you have and you have no um, muscle or bone. So, mm -hmm. so basically, they're thinking about skin cancer to the point of they would they used to give a drug and they still do called tamoxifen. They'd say tamoxifen, you got to take this. It's going to prevent a recurrence of breast cancer to their breast cancer patients. Well, tamoxifen causes uterine cancer. Did they care about that? So just drop it down to the other they, end of the they body. Just, they yeah. just dumped uterine cancer on me. So yeah. I get patients that come in, and I'm the gynecologist, and I'm like, you're on tamoxifen. I've got to look at you. I've got to surveil you. I've got to, now, now that you're on that drug, which I don't like, I like the arimidex and the aromatase inhibitors for bre prevention of breast cancer. They work better. But this, and they don't cause cancer, but this causes uterine cancer. And so I have a problem, but the breast cancer doctors go, oh, that's okay. You know, it's not going to kill you. So, I mean, that that's a problem Yeah, because that specialty is not even looking at what they're, they're causing. But someone like me who's an, not a doctor and is an ignorant consumer of technical medicine, I mean, I listen to a doctor say with all their experience mm -hmm. and training and certainty, this is what you should do. Then I go to a different doctor and they go, oh, my God, that'll kill you. This is what you should do. Right, and that's I don't know how to sort that out. I know, and that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. We're trying to sort this out for you because if you can learn to consider the source every time somebody gives you that kind of recommendation, you can say, so what other problems in other areas can this cause for me? I mean... Well, and, and you know, you, you tackle one thing at a time. Like, uh, is, there's another statistic that I want to read from the article, yes. but... Mm -hmm. Again, when I was growing up, everyone in my world smoked. They right. smoked in the car.
They smoked in the movie theaters. They smoked in airplanes. Mm -hmm. They smoked at home. I grew up being exposed to secondary smoke mm -hmm. for all, all of my Which childhood. Is almost as bad as doing it yourself. Yeah, and well, the, yeah, yourself. the data shows it can be. So uh, I have never been a smoker. Mm -hmm. And society has gradually changed in America where fewer and fewer, fewer people are smoking, especially teenagers mm -hmm. smoking, at least standard tobacco products. They may be smoking yeah, some something other else. Right. But, but this article says that research in Sweden tells that over a 20-year period of sun avoiders, of studying sun avoiders, that these sun avoiders were twice as likely to die as the sun worshipers who were out tanning all the time. The, the mortality rate was twice as high. The Journal of Internal Medicine had a conclusion that the avoidance of sun exposure is a risk factor of similar mag magnitude as smoking in terms of life expectancy. So... So avoiding the sun is just as bad as if you were smoking. smoking. So, <laughs> I mean, but that's, that's in Sweden. Big. That that's a limited study yes, in Sweden, and but it's a twenty-year long skins, study. Yeah, skin and, mostly le white. and not as much sun exposure as we have closer to the to the equator. Right. I mean, if they if they don't just travel and get sun exposure somewhere else. So I, I guess pick your poison. The, the thing that we're trying to tell you is get some information, make a choice, make an informed choice, and. We would encourage you to always choose for balance. Don't be mm -hmm. on the extremes of anything. And in this case, use sunscreen, but you have some time in the sun that you don't use sunscreen. Right. Especially at hours of the day that you're not going to get burned. So that's kind of the fin my final my final statement is we've given you the numbers, we've given you the statistics, uh, and and that's what it comes out with is that and to me that's moderation. I remember going on a float trip on the Buffalo River, which is a famous scenic float trip in, in Arkansas, with some friends about 20 years ago. And they showed up in long sleeve shirts, long pants, and big farmer hats. hats so that they were sure that no sun would get to them uh, because they're all worried about having skin well, we cancer. We were in Turks and Caicos with an ophthalmologist and his family. Uh-huh. They never got any sun. They always had huge hats, and then they'd put a towel over themselves, and then they wear long sleeves. I mean, towel yeah. over the hat. And I mean, I'm I'm kind of going, you know, it's why why be in Turks and Caicos? I mean, really, <laughs> I mean, you're not going to feel as perhaps good as it was if a social little, event. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, uh, so that's that's one of the things I kind of went, hmm. But at that time, it was believed. This this is actually 15 years ago. It was a belief that no one should ever get any sun. Right. And those of us who are getting tan were like, oh, oh, oh that's yeah. terrible. Right. So I just sucked it up and got tan <laughs> <All right. laughs> with so, sunscreen. So it's confusing, but make At your times. best choice. And, and you need the vitamin D. You need exposure to the sun. You need to avoid getting sunburns. And beyond that, you have to do whatever makes you happy, makes you comfortable. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.